Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 11.3 Beta 1. This is available to developers, and maybe by the time you're watching this, also to public beta testers. If it's not out, usually it's out within a few hours or the following day. Now, this one brings quite a few changes. This came in at 2.17 gigabytes. Let's take a look at the build number and then talk about the features. The build number is 15E5167F, and this particular build brings a few different things that are finally back. And that first thing is messages in the cloud. So Apple actually has messages on iCloud back on this device. So that basically means that you can free up space on your phone, like it says, but really what it means is all of your devices will sync once this is out on all of your devices. So if you have an iPhone and an iPad or an iPhone and a Mac or any combination of those sharing your iMessages, maybe you get a text and you want to delete that group text, you delete it here, it will delete everywhere. So that's one of the things that I think is really handy. They'll always be in sync across all your devices. So that part's really nice. Now, when the phone first boots up, it actually brings up this screen that says privacy and privacy basically now will show you this icon when your device is sharing your information with a partner. So maybe an app or something like that. And there is a ton of information on this. If you actually click learn more, you couldn't take a screenshot of this, or if you tap learn more, uh, what you'll get is a huge list of all of these different things you can can actually see and see what Apple has to say about privacy with all of these different things. And you can see it's alphabetical and this is a very long list and you can read it at apple.com slash privacy. Now, aside from just messages in the cloud, they also have new business messaging. So this is the example they gave Lowe's. Maybe you're using Lowe's chat or something and you need to talk to one of the representatives. It will now use the messaging platform to basically allow you to do that more easily. So if you're in the messaging platform and you want to talk to a representative, it will do it there. We're not exactly sure how this works yet since they only gave us a picture of it, but that's the basic premise behind it. Now, the first time you go into messages, it gives you that option to do messages in the cloud. You can also turn it on in your iCloud settings within settings. Now there are four new an emoji. If you like an emoji, uh, let's take a look at that. You can see there's a few here that we're familiar with, but if we go to the bottom, we've got four new ones. We've got a lion. It's looking for my face since it's kind of behind the camera. It doesn't see it, but you've got the lion, you've got a dragon, you've got a skull and a bear. So you have any one of these and Apple just keeps adding these and it will be interesting to see what we have in a year from now. I actually hardly use them myself, but I'd love to hear if you use them a lot or you just think they're neat to play with for a little bit and never use them again. Now, Apple has changed a few different things. They've gotten rid of the name iBooks and changed it to books. So iBooks is now books and they're slowly getting rid of those I names, meaning iBooks is now books, messages it used to be iMessage, it's messages now. Uh, that was changed some time ago and slowly they're just changing things just like Apple watch. We thought was going to be the iWatch instead. It's Apple watch. So they're doing that across everything. So maybe iMac will be just Mac. I'm not sure in the future, but it's one thing that's interesting to know. There's a new feature in the health app that lets you get health records tied right into your health app. So this is something that may be very helpful for some people. You can see it says add online accounts for participating health networks and hospitals. You can manage clinical health records from your multiple sources right on your iPhone. So this can be very helpful for quite a few people. This pops up and then you can actually add it and pick your, your providers. There's a list there. Let's take a look at that. So here you can see we're at that screen and here's a list of those providers that are participating right now. Hopefully more will be added in the future, but you have these options to to connect with your different providers and get your different records across there. Now, another thing they've added that you can't really see is AR kit updates. So if you're using an AR enabled application, AR kit is now available to developers to allow them to see things vertically and sense different surfaces better. So if you're using an app and it's trying to find a surface like this, uh, it can more easily find those things. And I guess it's improved. Also, there's something that has to do with your emergency services. So if you use emergency on here or you call an emergency number and you have what's called AML available in your area, your phone will now send a more accurate location data in information packet through messages to that provider. So maybe you had to call 911, you had an issue, 
and it will pinpoint your location and send that information to them if it's available. So that's very helpful if you're having an issue there. Now there's a couple of icon updates in settings. So one of those I noticed privacy has a blue color around it. Now, if we look on the previous version on the eight plus, you'll see it's just gray there and that's just little tweaks throughout. And also one of the things I noticed, uh, or at least someone told me about was in music. If you go into music, you find someone, uh, let's find an artist here. Here's an artist. If we tap on this, tap the name of someone here, it now provides us with a little menu of go to artist or go to album on previous versions of iOS. It doesn't do that. So here's the same song. If I tap on the name, it actually goes over to the album this way. So now it gives you an option or a choice of what you want to go to. Now, one of the things everybody's talking about is CPU throttling on older devices. And here I have my iPhone seven plus and under battery is where we should see those new settings for us to be able to disable CPU throttling based on our battery condition. So if we go into battery, we should see that here, but we don't yet. And that will only be seen, I think on iPhone six up to iPhone seven, seven plus. So the six, six S seven, we'll see those. We won't see it on five S and we probably won't see it on the eight or 10 until the following year, since it seems that Apple implements it one year later. But many people are reporting that their iPhones are much, much faster on this version. Uh, Geekbench is actually showing that as well. So if you're on an iPhone six or six S or seven, and it was slow before this beta version, people are saying it's not being throttled right now. And their phone is very, very fast. Now I did do a Geekbench of this phone and let's take a look at that. Uh, I think the scores were pretty much in line with where we were at before, but if we take a look at the history, we go to the CPU score. You'll see here that today, well, we had 10,212 for the multi-core, 4,228 for single core, and it's right in line with the previous versions. Uh, it's basically going to be that way. If they're using the full power, it's going to be right around 10,000 and 4,000 for single core. So it's right where it should be. And in fact, the phone feels really pretty quick. And if you're using voice translation or voice transactions, basically you're talking uh, to input text or something. It's, it's very quick usually. So if we go back and forth, the first time you activate, it, it's a little bit slow, but most of the time it's pretty quick and just activates immediately. Now there is no true dark mode. They didn't really didn't change anything as far as that goes. And also there's a couple changes we're not going to see. One of those is Apple music will soon be home for music videos. So we don't see that yet, or at least I don't see it yet. You'll have music videos in here and then home kit on the back end can now authenticate with new providers or different providers, uh, based on uh, a couple different things as far as its authentication. Currently they have to have a special chip and a license. It's very expensive. And that's why home kit devices are so expensive right now in the future. We won't need any of that because they can implement it through software. And that's a change that's in this version. And finally, Apple says they've improved news with this version. So if you go into news, uh, your stories, I guess will be better. I haven't seen that yet. And you'll also in the future have a curated video section. So that should be pretty interesting. I don't know if that means YouTube videos or something else, but there's going to be a curated video section within the news app. And they're really trying to push people, I think to that app, although I'm not sure that many people will use it but maybe it will get better and better over time. It seems like they're putting a lot of effort into it. So that's it for this version of iOS. I'm sure we'll see some tweaks and things to different fonts or maybe different size changes. I'm sure you'll find some of those throughout the OS and I would expect iOS 12 in June to be shown off just like we've seen before with previous years and maybe a beta every week until that point or until this releases, and then we'll see iOS 12 at some point. So let me know if you find anything else though, in the comments below, I'll link this wallpaper in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like, as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <music>